and all in all it cost me what that cannot be right in this video i will go through all the costs i've had with owning a vw phaeton w12 over the period of four years you, you heard that right I've previously done videos about how much it cost me to own a Mercedes SL55 AMG and a Porsche 911 Turbo. So this is the third video in this series and in this one I tackle the most expensive car I've ever owned. A 2005 VW Phaeton W12. I'm not just saying this is the most expensive car I ever owned because it was expensive to buy. It wasn't really. But because I have a spreadsheet and over 30 pages of service records for the car. I've owned the car for four years, I've driven 70,000 kilometers in it and this is the result of all of it. So let's not lose too much time and go right into it. I bought the car on the 30th of October 2010 and at the 6th of November I had the winter wheels put on that was 89 francs. At the 8th of December I had a large service done. It was 3525 Swiss francs. By the way, one Swiss franc is about one US dollar if you're wondering. That big service also included brakes, meaning um, pads and rotors in the front. And those alone were 2000 francs of that. 3,525 francs. At the 4th of March 2011, I got a new number plate holder that was 76 Swiss francs. At the 9th of April 2011, I had the summer wheels put back on. There was another 95 francs. Then in May of 2011, one of the mechanisms to wind the rear windows um, broke so I had to replace that and I also replaced a trim piece that had a little speaker in it because the speaker was blown it was making noise all in all that was 1142 francs about a month later I bought the Dention Gateway 300 which is basically an mp3 player that you can connect to the car's infotainment system that one I bought used at a very good price, it cost me 58 francs and I installed it myself. In October 2011, I had an automatic transmission service because I reckon the car had never had one. It had 130,000 kilometers, so it felt right. And I also had the Xenons replaced because they were flickering and this, it was driving me insane. Obviously, with the Phaeton, if you want to replace the Xenon bulbs, you have to remove the bumper and <laughs> remove the headlights. So that was pretty expensive. Also, in the, at that occasion, I had all the, the little plastic tubing replaced that, um, that had to do with the, with the crankcase ventilation. And because the pla they were made out of plastic, they were becoming brittle, they were breaking, and the car was getting was getting air it wasn't supposed to get. So I had that done because the car was due for a vehicle inspection. So I wanted to have it tip top ready. Also put the winter wheels back on. That was 4,363 Swiss francs. Yeah. Um, the car did not pass the inspection because the upper control arms, the bushings were worn out. So I had then, about a week later, replaced all the upper control arms in the front for 1,478 Swiss francs. In January 2012, the car was due for another service. Uh, I also had the rear brake pads replaced. All in all, it cost me 1,746 Swiss francs. Then, in March, I bought new summer tires. They were 1,224 1, francs fitted. In May of 2012, I had the ballasts for the xenon lights changed because even though we changed the bulbs, they were still flickering, it was still driving me mad. These were some ballasts I bought of a specialist in the UK. 
Um, it cost me 200 francs to have them fitted and they didn't work. With a factory tester, it wasn't possible to program them and you need to program them in order to adjust the height of the light in this case, because it's done electronically. So they didn't work. So in July, I replaced the Xenon Ballast with OEM ones. I mean, really with the VW part number, not just Valeo written on top of them. Um, they were 1,600 francs. And at the same time, I also had the windscreen wiper assemblies uh, replaced because my windscreen wipers had failed, meaning that one windscreen wiper would have would not move anymore and the other one would mash into it because the Phaeton, of course, it has two separate windscreen wiper motors. Um, I had to replace them both because they were rusted and they were 500 francs. I also had to replace a height sensor for the uh, air ride. All in all, that service cost 3,125 Swiss francs. In August of 2012, I had the AC refilled, which was really fun because I was on my way to Italy and about halfway the AC stopped working. So I did it in Italy. It was relatively cheap compared to Switzerland. It only cost me 65 Swiss francs. Um, and I needed to do it because it was the height of summer and it was incredibly warm and no AC is a no-go. In November 2012, I had another wheel change. It was 95 francs, not much. Then in February of 2013, I had another service. And at that service, I also had the, the coupling rods for the stabilizer bar uh, replaced and a joint for a driving shaft. Also, I had the Xenon bulbs replaced once more because we found a service note from VW that said, if you have problems with flickering, do not use Osram bulbs, put in Philips bulbs. So we replaced the Osrams with the Philips and it never flickered again. Ah, anyway, that service altogether cost me 2,444 francs. I also want to point out that this whole lights flickering story in total with all the work that has been done, the parts I bought and gave back has cost me about 3000 francs. So yeah, maybe if your light flickers, just ignore it, deal with it, get rid of the car. In April of 2013, I had the summer wheels put back on and I also had a bleeding screw for the brakes replaced because it was leaking and leaking brakes are no good because at some point they will not break anymore. Then in June of 2013, I had another automatic transmission service done. Even though it was just 25,000 kilometers ago that I did the last one, the automatic transmission pan was leaking. And at that point, if you have to take the pan off, I just had it serviced anyway. That was 753 Swiss francs. In October of 2013, I had new winter tires fitted. In this case, it was a Nokia WR A3. Um, altogether, it cost me 937 Swiss francs. By the way, not great tires. In February of 2014, I had to replace the brake rotors and the pads again. This time I bought the, at least the brake pads from uh, a company called EBC. They cost about half as much as the OEMs cost and they worked great. And the, the, the rotors, I had to buy them original because only VW makes them in that size. And uh, yeah, anyway, altogether that cost me 1,431 Swiss francs. In April of 2014, I had another service performed. That was relatively cheap, relatively speaking for a phaeton. It's 1,134 Swiss francs. Two weeks after that service, it was still April 2014, I had to have the air conditioning refilled again because it didn't work anymore. This time it was 184 francs. In July of 2014, it finally happened. A shock from the air suspension failed. 
And when I bought the car, I knew that my car was the last year that used the old system of uh, air suspension, which was not compatible with the later systems. And I knew there were no replacement parts for it. So if a shock failed, you had to replace all four shocks and the control unit, meaning it would cost around 16,000 Swiss francs in parts alone. So when the shock failed, I was sure I would junk the car. But then my mechanic told me, no, no, they are actually starting to reproduce the shocks for this generation of cars. So I was able to buy just one shock, which was 2,122 Swiss francs. And it was also especially expensive because at the VW dealer, they spent six and a half hours diagnosing why they couldn't initialize the new shock. That diagnosing time alone cost me 1,161 francs. So all in all, this replacement of one shock cost me 4,524 Swiss francs. And fortunately, that was the last expense I've had with that car because I sold it pretty soon after that. So in total, that's 28,823 francs for maintenance and upgrades. I also spent 19,871 francs on fuel. I driven the car about 70,000 kilometers. The average was 16.5 liters on 100 kilometers. Um, it consumed 11,247 liters of fuel. And for you environmentalists out there, it produced 26,205 kilograms of CO2. Insurance was 7,200 francs was roughly about 1,800 francs per year. Taxes were 3,663 Swiss francs. It was about 800 francs where I used to live. And then I moved to the canton of Zurich where it was about 1,300 francs. So all in all, 3,663 francs over the period of four years. I originally bought the car for 21,000 Swiss francs and I sold it four years later for 9,000 Swiss francs. This means I've incurred about 12,000 francs of depreciation. All in all, that makes for a total cost of ownership of 71,557 francs, which is 17,889 francs per year, or one franc and two cents per kilometer. So this was a massively expensive car and was it worth it? Well, in hindsight, no. Before I bought the car, I knew it was going to be expensive to run. I knew I would have repairs on it. I knew I would have to spend a lot of money on fuel, but the cost of the repairs is one thing. The cost of servicing is one thing, but what bothered me, what bothered me most was all the times the car was in the workshop because what I don't have in here is for example the two times I had a recall on the ignition coils and I had to bring in the car twice because the first time after they put back in the intake manifold they didn't put a new gasket on it so the car wasn't running right so they had to take it off again and put a new gasket on it um, yeah but the car spent a lot of time at the dealership in fact, I mean, I even have pictures of the car on the lift because it happened so frequently. But all in all, it was, of course, a nice car. And I liked it very much. I mean, it looked nice. It had this understated look. Um, my car was fitted with some, some really cool Bentley wheels that the previous owner had put on. It was in a Passionata Blue Heliochrome, which was a, at that time a 14,000 franc option that color alone, it was just beautiful. Then it had, it had this super nice interior with a super soft sensitive leather. It was comfortable. It had the best seats of any car I've ever driven. I mean, it even had two rollers for the seat belts, one at the top and one at the bottom. You didn't feel them at all. The seat, seats would massage you. The car was powerful. It was uh, comfortable. It was a really nice car to drive. But given how much it cost me, I don't think it was worth it. And I mean, there is a reason why this car, which cost 220,000 Swiss francs new, I bought it five years old 
for 21,000 Swiss francs. So the car had back basically depreciated by 200,000 Swiss francs. And um, even then, it was still very expensive to own. I still had some depreciation on it. It was an expensive car. And I still have emotional scars and financial scars from it because that car made sure I didn't have money for anything else. And it did it in quite a sneaky fashion because it wasn't like, here's a 10,000 franc bill, but it was, no, 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 it's like a thousand here, 2,000 here. Now you've done major service and, and work on the car. It's four grand, like, okay. But then it's, again, a thousand here, a thousand there, a thousand here, a thousand there. And in the end, you spend 28,823 francs on servicing. So, yeah, this is my experience with the VW Phaeton. It's a car I, I liked. I really did like it. Otherwise, I would not have spent so much money on it. But boy, was it expensive to own. So thank you for watching the total cost of ownership breakdown of my 2005 VW Phaeton W12. And let me know, do you have or did you have such a nightmare car? A car that would have you constantly worried about something breaking or that would drain your bank account like the best gold digger ever could? Please leave a comment down below. If this video was interesting to you, please leave a like. Consider subscribing to my channel. Hey, and so long. Thanks for watching. VW Phaeton. VW Phaeton. 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 VW Phaeton. Phaeton. VW Phaeton. VW Phaeton.